So guys, what is up? Here's a little video talking about liquidity and mitigation. I'm going to be looking at GBP USD, and I'm just going to be covering the topics that I just, you know, talked about. So we'll get into it a little bit more after I break down what this pair is actually doing, and then we'll go from there. If you guys like the video, subscribe, comment, share it, all that good stuff. I'm going to try to make it about 10 minutes long, just because. I think the shorter lessons are more beneficial. I'm not going to try to bore you guys. So anyway, let's get right into it. Let's start by looking at the structure on this pair. So if we look at the structure, it's very clear that we are just making higher highs and higher lows. So I'm going to mark off the higher highs because in an uptrend, it's primarily characterized by higher highs. Um, technically, you say higher highs and higher lows, but what maintains the uptrend is the higher highs that we make right so like right here we break above we get a pullback when is this higher low here confirmed this higher low right here is confirmed once we break above this so this is a higher high right here after we break above and then when so we get a push down to here and then we create what looks to be a low but again when is it confirmed the low is confirmed when we make a higher high. Now with this, we didn't actually or technically make a higher high. We created equal highs, which is fine. Um, I do prefer making a higher high because that tells us or tells me that we have um, serious intent to continue to the upside. So I'm going to focus more so on the structure within here. I think that will be more beneficial if I focus on this structure. So if we look within this leg, we can see we had a ton of imbalance right here. We also had this sell to buy candle right here. Sell to buy, then mitigated this sell to buy right here. All right. So you can see a series of mitigations and this sell to buy actually mitigated this here, right? So we have a series of mitigations all throughout here with sell to buy candles. And it, the mitigations are in the form of sell to buys because we're in an uptrend, right? If we were in a downtrend, it'd be buy to sells because it would be boom, push, buy to sell, right? Right in here, this would be a buy to sell. And it could have mitigated a buy to sell here. It's literally just this in the other direction. So surely that makes sense. If it doesn't, you're in trouble. Um, just kidding. You guys should know that though. Why is this not working? Come on. Okay. Oh, it is. Never mind. I'm being an idiot. So anyway, as I was saying, we have a series of mitigations here. So a logical place to be looking for buys for me was down here. Because again, we had a series of sell to buy candles that were being mitigated. And we also were working with a little bit of liquidity, which I'll show you in a minute. But again, you guys can see like this was just mitigation after mitigation after mitigation. Sell, sell to buy, mitigated. Sell to buy right here, mitigated right here. So, and these moves always happen after a break of structure. So like when you mitigate a sell to buy, the true mitigation occurs after the break of structure. And I apologize if you guys just heard my phone talking. I did not mean for that to happen. But anyway, so here's the BOS, right? We had a high low. Here's our sell to buy. We break above here. So it's not mitigated until price comes back down after the break of structure. Now, why is this important? It's important for a couple of reasons. Here, um, I'll try to find a, a good live example, but let's say we had a wick right here. Let's say that this candle wicked down. Let's say it wicked down and filled this like that, okay? So if it filled this, you would think this is mitigated already, but not technically. And I should be a little more specific and say, let's see if we can go to the 50 minute and get a better example of what exactly I'm trying to tell you guys. 
because it is a bit confusing, but if we go back to right here, uh, right here. So let's say this candle, right, was like right here and it didn't close above. So let's say this candle right here, this is the close, so the open of this one's here. Let's say the open, it, it didn't have any range to the upside, right? It didn't actually close above this and it wicked down. It wouldn't be mitigated. It's not mitigated until after the break of structure. So like this, if you have a sell to buy and a candle that occurs before the break of structure, so this is your BOS. It looks awful, but you get it. BOS, if you have a candle like right here that wicks down and meets this, that's not a full mitigation. A full mitigation occurs only after you have broken structure to the upside, okay? So that is important to remember. And that's something that would always throw me off when I first started trading. I would always think about it and I'd be like, wait, hold up. Is this mitigated or is this not? Like if I saw this, I'd be like, oh, it's mitigated. So if it comes back, it's just going to continue and blow through this level but that's not necessarily true what's true is that the mitigation doesn't count until the breaker structure has been completed right so now that that's out of the way and we've talked about mitigations and we have this really clear train of mitigations we'll talk about liquidity and how liquidity plays into all this so in a lot of these examples there wasn't a ton of liquidity yes here is the sell to buy that we were looking at as an area of interest, right? We were looking at this area um, to trade off of, okay? So interestingly enough, what happens right before we get to it? We kind of stall out here. We stall out because there's no liquidity above the POI. So I'm gonna get rid of all the rest of this stuff and just focus solely on this POI. So whenever we see a POI, we want to see some form of liquidity resting above it because a form of liquidity, and obviously if you're in a downtrend, it would be um, resting below. And so I'll, I'll tell you what that means. But basically there's liquidity above this POI now that this is here. And we need that liquidity because we can't just push the market up from this sell to buy with no you know, no fuel. Liquidity is the fuel. So what ends up happening is here, we generate liquidity in the form of one, two, three equal lows. And then we take that out, right? You can see if you're a retail trader, this is for you, this would be an area of support. So you get a break and retest right here. So they're just generating liquidity at these areas, but there was nothing if you look at this leg, here's your sell to buy. Where's the liquidity in this? There's nothing in here. There's no sell to buy. There's, you know, like there's no sell to buy here, which would just create a little low in the market. So like if you had a sell to buy, there would be a low right here, but we don't even have that. There's nothing resting here. So there's no money to push the markets up once we trade into this level. You actually could have refined this entry, by the way, to this because this is within the larger um sell to buy right and this is the last indecision candle right here this is the last part or the last you know consolidated period in the market before it actually decides to go long so if you had just taken this trade it would have been an absurd r r, r sorry i'm stuttering be like a one to 20, one to 19. So just based off of structure, mitigation and liquidity. Now, I would have been a bit more cautious taking this trade if this had not formed here, because if this had not formed, there'd be no, there'd be nothing to drive us higher. But we generate this liquidity right before or right above our POI right here. So we can grab orders, right? There are uh, sell stops here for people buying because this is a low. So people have their sell stops right here. So that means they have to buy the positions back, right? When it gets to here, or in other words, for 
the, how the markets work, there's always a buyer for a seller and a seller for a buyer. So if there are 10,000 stop losses here, there are 10,000 sells. Now there needs to be 10,000 buys, right? And those buys begin to push the market up. I mean, granted, you can see that obviously the buyers outweigh the sellers here because price pushes up, but that's the general idea, right? So we get this POI. So one, it's mitigation, looking at mitigation, which we did, we had here, here, and here, and then looking at liquidity. So we have this area, we generate liquidity above it. We take the liquidity, mitigate, and then push higher. Now, the next move, like I said earlier, a logical area for me to buy was right in here, but we run into the same, the same kind of issue, right? We have this huge sell to buy, which mind you, mitigated this doji candle sell to buy, which mitigated down here. So we have our mitigation. Now, what is used as liquidity within this leg? Right above the sell to buy, there's nothing. There's absolutely no liquidity. This is all buying. There's no wicks or equal O's or anything. There's nothing to be found here. So we don't generate liquidity here. So what ends up happening? What, what, what does price end up doing? You can see there was liquidity here, right? And then it, we tap it one more time, generating even more liquidity, right? So we generate relatively equal lows. And then what do you guys notice about this candle? Very impulsive sell to buy back up, right? Very, very impulsive sell to buy back up. Now, where does the break of structure actually happen? Well, if you're looking at this, it's a bit tricky, but you can look at the structure like high, low, high, and then low, high. Do we close below here? Yes, we do. Low, high, low. So this is the break of structure right here. This is where price closed above. And here is the sell to buy. So remember what I said about mitigations. This isn't mitigated until after we retrace following the BOS. So we get the BOS. So we need to push up, break a structure. And then when if price were to come back down to this, that's mitigated, right? Without the BOS, it's not mitigated. So like even here, you can kind of see what I'm saying. There was no break of structure right here with this push, but we kind of came back to it. But this isn't technically the mitigation of this level. We need to see the break of structure here and then the mitigation. So the break occurs when price closes above here. So now we can trade all the way back down to here because this is still in not mitigated completely, right? Now, what happens? So we push up, create a higher high relative to this high and this high. So now this is one leg. Now let's look at our mitigations. You can look at this as one huge sell to buy candle. And that's actually what we ended up trading into, but you can refine it even more if you wanna look inside of the entire leg. So within this entire leg, and I'm gonna consolidate or kind of shorten this discussion because within this leg, um, where did we have some, some sell to buy candles that could function as POIs? We have one here, reacted off of it. We have a doji candle here, price traded through it. But what do you notice down here? We have this sell to buy. And what do you notice about this sell to buy? So first, let's kind of backtrack a little bit, but this will be a good example. So this is a sell to buy. Why did price push off of this strongly? Well, low, 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 low. There's liquidity to drive the market higher when we got to that sell to buy to mitigate. We could push up from it, right? Now, why did this one not hold? 
let's look at the story of liquidity, right? Yeah, if we look at the story of liquidity, there was not a lot of liquidity resting above. At most, you could say it was this low. Look at this low in terms of liquidity compared to these lows. There's no comparison, right? We had four lows versus one. The POI here with four lows ends up pushing up the POI with one low, and it's really not even a low. POI with one low or very to little liquidity gets blown through. Now, why did this bottom one hold, right? This bottom one held because we had liquidity, right? Look, very clear, defined single low. Now this trades through it and creates relatively equal lows. So people, AKA retail traders, see this as an area of support. So price wicks into it, pushes up. So now we have equal lows resting above a POI. And what happens? We impulsively sweep the equal lows and then trade above breaking structure here. So this isn't mitigated because here's a BOS we need to test after. And we ended up breaking or creating equal highs up here. So it's the same story. What happens when we sweep liquidity? Equal lows swept and equal highs and lows are just forms of liquidity. Swept, run. Equal lows, swept, run. Equal lows, or not equal lows, single low swept impulsively with this huge candle run. So you guys can see mitigation and liquidity is really what drives the market, right? And if I, I'm gonna go through a couple other pairs. This on, what was it, UJ? Um, this had equal lows, swept, break of structure. I didn't take this because there was just no confirmation here that just, went straight through the zone, but it's the same story over and over. AUD USD barely missed my entry, but it's literally the same story, right? There's something in here that mitigated this. So there's a sell to buy, mitigated here, push up, break a structure, mitigate here, push down. This needs to be mitigated, barely missed, but Equal lows, strong push, close back above, break structure. This is unmitigated, right? And on Euro USD, same story. There's something within the SWIC, mitigate here. Push down, break structure higher, break structure here. We need to mitigate down here. What do you see? Lows, 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 and bounce. Doji candle should sell off and buy back up. So I hope this video helps you guys and you know just really covers liquidity and mitigations a bit more if again if you guys liked it please share it i apologize for stuttering a little bit throughout some parts of it and also if you can hear my water um i apologize i get really thirsty on these calls sorry so anyway hope you guys enjoyed if you like it leave a like share it, and we'll talk to you on the next video bye guys